Good evening, friends. It's dinner time here, here at the 1870s Homestead, and my name's Rachel. And we like to share a lot of the ways that we use our harvest from food that we grow here at our homestead and make really fun meals. And, um, you know, I was down yesterday just doing some grocery shopping out of our pantry, and there are things that I just need to use up out of the freezer to make space for things that I make to go back in. And so today we're going to, um, from that exercise, I'm gonna be throwing in some frozen broccoli in this dish. Maybe some broccoli leaves, maybe some shredded carrots. We'll see how I feel when we get there, but we're gonna be making a homestead inspired broccoli beef using our Instapot today. So let's get into it. Please use this as just inspiration and go research other lots of recipes out there on the internet. I'll show you what I'm using, um, but yeah, hopefully it just gives you a idea of new fun ways of in recipes to make something different in your house. So first things first, we're gonna use our saute setting on the Instant Pot. I'm gonna add in just a couple tablespoons of oil the recipe I saw called for olive oil, but I'm just using avocado oil. And then what we are working with today for our beef is our stewed goat meat. And they are just little chunks. So you could um, use any type of beef. Big pieces like this I might slice in half, but you can use um, really any kind of beef or roast. Uh, moose meat, if you're lucky enough to have moose, would probably be good too. Um, deer, venison. So let's slice some of these big chunks up. And then we're gonna saute that just till we get it like a brown crusty edge on the pieces and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, this is like a pound of goat meat. You can use up to one and a half pounds or just completely double what I'm showing you. All right, that's good enough. You don't have to overly brown it because um, Instapot meals should be quick and easy. So that was maybe three minutes, if that. And then we are going to be tossing in our onions and giving those a quick saute. Most recipes that I saw don't call for onions, but I just thought that it would be great. So I kind of just thickly sliced some. Alrighty, while those onions are finishing up, we're gonna quickly throw together our sauce. So we need three quarter cup of beef broth, half a cup of soy sauce or liquid aminos, two tablespoons of sesame oil. I'm gonna be adding ginger two hours, maybe like a good tablespoon or so of ginger. And we will be tossing in some hot pepper flakes for a little bit of spice. And then we need some brown sugar, about a third of a cup. And these onions have sweated really well. They're looking really nice. So we're gonna add our beef back. And we will add all of our sauce. Use the metal spoon scraping, close your ears. Now if you didn't want to, I get questioned a lot on using sugar in recipes. Yeah, you don't have to use it. You could totally use honey instead. Um, and then I'm gonna add probably four or five, let's see, four or five cloves of our fermented honey garlic. Alrighty. And now we're going to pressure cook this for, I believe the recipe said 10 minutes, 12 minutes. 
So we're just gonna do high pressure, 12 minutes. <laughs> That's the right way. All right, and then while the rice is going now, the broccoli's going. Grab my knife and we'll get our veggies chopped. So I just have a bag, um, bag of frozen broccoli. So that, it usually calls for a pound though. That's not a pound. So I'm going to be adding some of our preserved and frozen cabbage sticks. See if I can't, I can't chop these. Nope, not a chance. So we're probably just gonna throw it in whole and that'll break apart while it cooks. Ooh, you guys are so crooked. I was just about to head downstairs, so I did not need this full pint of beef broth, and I don't have anything on the menu. And I'm just gonna share with you, if Rachel was to put this in the fridge, I would probably forget to use it, and it would go to waste. This is not only so nutrient dense, but it's expensive to make, too, um, if you were to go out and buy bones. Now, our bones came with the portion of cow that we purchased, but it's still expensive because we did spend money on it. So I'm gonna put this in the freezer and then I'll have it for the next recipe. All right, once your valve is dropped, go ahead and take the lid off away from you. Mm, that looks great. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Set you guys back down. Toss in my broccoli. And then I just microwave the cabbage for like a minute so I could slice it because I did really want it sliced. Oh wow, it's gonna be so good. All right, then just two minutes more. All right, the rice should be almost done. The last thing that we need to make um, is make a slurry. Uh, tapioca flour, arrowroot powder, um, cornstarch with a little bit of water so that when it's all done, you can mix that um, thickening agent in to make it thicker. Okay, we're going in with three tablespoons of tapioca flour. And then I'm gonna add three tablespoons of water to this. All right, so once that um, is done, we will add this to it and let it thicken for about five minutes just on keep warm setting and we'll be ready to eat. All righty, just got done with that pressure relief. So I conferred with Todd who is our pro home cook and he said it's best to actually put it all back on saute. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And stir in our slurry. And we'll make this nice thick sauce. And my rice is done. And this smells absolutely amazing. So yeah, if you guys have ideas on different variations of a similar meal that you have done, um, leave it in the comments below. It's always fun to inspire each other to make homemade, absolutely delicious food from the food that we've preserved and we've grown ourselves or um, put up ourselves. Support local, however you do it to get good wholesome food into your family's diet. And as fast as that was, that's already thick. So I'm gonna turn this off and get my husband in here for dinner time. I have no idea what you made. Broccoli beef. Oh, like Asian style? Is that why I smell like Asian food? Mm-hmm. And uh, broccoli goat. Broccoli goat. <laughs> 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 So yeah, that's what's for dinner tonight, cooking from our pantry, from our harvest this year. 
and making room in the freezer at the same time. So <laughs> that's the way it usually goes in the winter. One thing comes out and another thing goes in. So <laughs> For sure. So when I was cooking this, just so you know, I only needed half a jar of beef broth. So the other half of the jar is in the um, freezer stand up with all the soup jars. Oh. Okay. So okay. should you need it for a recipe? Okay. I might just drink it too. Okay. <laughs> it turned out really, that's the really good beef broth we did. It's really dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this tastes good. Good job. Mm-hmm. So I'll see you guys on the next video. Next time I get inspired to make something good. A lot of times it's just leftovers <laughs> or whatever, but we usually cook a good meal around here three or four times a week. Mm -hmm. So see you guys on the next video.